Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Nanda Yogini. I'm very excited to share with you some uh, headstand movements today. It's something that many of my students ask me how to do. And if you do it with a lot of patience and uh, mindful observation, it's pretty safe. So I will guide you into a couple of poses that are preparatory for the actual headstand. And uh, if you um, want anything else or if you don't feel really comfortable trying it today, that's okay. Just keep doing the preparatory poses for a couple more days. You can also message me and ask for more details and I'll be there for you. So let's do our preparatory poses for Shirshasana headstand. Shirshasana is known as the king of all poses in yoga. It will bring you a lot of energy and uh, make you think more clearly and even give you a very good sense of peace and um, groundness. So why not to try to do it? Some people are afraid of doing Shirshasana headstand because they say their neck or shoulders or the spine can get injured. But it's really, really safe if you do it following steps and preparing your body to do it. So the first pose to make your arms stronger, your back a little bit more prepared for the headstand is very well known, uh, Downward Dog, Adho Mukha Shivanasana. So we will start um, with this pose. Just bring your hands a little bit more forward on the mat, wrists is under shoulders and knees under hips for tabletop. Separate your knees, hip length, and then tuck your toes on the back of your mat, breathing in, Separating your fingers, breathing out, making your middle fingers just face forward. Make sure the center of your palms are gluing against the mat. Keep gazing down in between your thumbs, one deep inhalation. When you exhale, you straighten your legs, lift your tailbone and push with your both arms straight backwards. Maybe you can align your heels and toes and make your heels go all the way down. If they don't touch the mat, don't worry about that. And if you want a little bit more flexibility in your pose, you can paddle for a while, breathing through nostrils and relaxing your facial muscles. So we stay in this pose for at least five long breaths. Breathing, moving the navel, moving the rib cage, bringing the energy of your inhalations from the navel to the top of the chest, and the energy of your exhalations from the chest into the navel again. When you reach your fifth exhalation, bring your knees down, tabletop, rest for two long breaths. And our second preparatory pose is Dolphin. It has a very similar energy of Downward Dog, but it's a little bit stronger. You will be holding the pose on your elbows. So check where your wrists are and bring your elbows down exactly on that same spot. Separate your hands. If hands apart, it's too hard on your shoulders, you can bring them together and interlace your fingers. Curling the toes on the back of the mat, breathing in for energy. When you breathe out, you lift your tailbone and push the hips all the way backwards. Check if your head will rest on the mat, we don't want that. If that happens, you step your toes forward. Breathe with your hamstrings, maybe paddle your feet, feel your arms, your legs, your abs, the muscles in your back. 
And I would also advise to stay for five long breaths for good results. When you reach your fifth exhalation, you can step your toes backwards again and lower your knees down. Back into tabletop. Two long breaths to rest. And let's go into our king pose, Shushasana, headstand. The elbows will be right under shoulders, exactly as before. We'll interlace our fingers and the palms are facing you. If you feel your head is too far from your hands, you can walk your knees a little bit more forward. And if you're not really confident to do that in the middle of your bedroom or living room, just go close to the wall and it's okay to have your back against the wall in the beginning. Don't feel bad about that. Bringing the forehead down on the mat, just the top of your forehead, curling the toes on the back of the mat, and once you straighten your legs, the top of the head will touch the mat. You can walk your toes a little bit closer to your elbows. And feel if you're really comfortable, you can lift one of your legs up, I wouldn't tell you to jump. Some people hop into the pose, but that's very easy to lose the balance. And from here, when you feel you're ready, you start bringing the other leg up. Maybe if you have someone to hold your legs up on place, that's also okay. In the beginning, we have to be very gentle with ourselves and allow the growth to be step by step. Just stay for a brief moment if you start doing this pose. And then you can just drop your feet down. If you're doing it for a while, just bring your legs down with more control. Separate your knees, sitting on your heels and resting on child's pose for five long breaths. When you finish, we just start coming up back to center. I will give you time with your child's pose and see you next time.